Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Redstone Week. This is day five. And today I'll show you how to build my automatic minecart loader and unloader. Uh, so this is real useful for um, collecting farms automatically or sending items from one location to another uh, without you having to do anything more than putting items into a chest or hopper. So uh, first of all, let's see how this works. So you see we have a cart down here. Uh, this is actually at the unloading station right now. I got the whole system turned off at the moment. But let me show you how it works. So we got some sugar cane in here from presumably what would be a sugar cane farm on top of this. And we also have a melon and pumpkin farm over here uh, with a lot of melons and pumpkins ready to be loaded. So all I have to do to turn the system on is to flick this lever here. You'll see the cart starts to roll out. Comes on over here and it starts to unload some sugar cane here and so we'll just yeah facilitate that we'll put some sugar cane in here take some out of here just to make it go a little quicker so we'll wait until this finishes taking out the sugar cane all right so it should be any second now we should see the cart automatically launch from here there we go and yeah then it comes over here to the melon and pumpkin farm and it will collect uh, all the melon and pumpkin farm, or all the melon and pumpkins that can, until it reaches um, a signal strength of 14. Uh, so basically, until this uh, whole thing is full here. And so let me just go ahead and help it along here. There we go. So it filled up till it was basically full, and then it returns over here, and it will unload. You'll see it's unloading some sugar cane into there now, and it'll wait until uh, it's completely. Uh, empty here so let's just simulate that once it drops all of its stuff off and then after this it will go ahead and launch off again and you'll see it does have some logic so here uh, it'll have uh, some logic here where it basically detects that this hopper is empty so it says hey I got nothing to load here so get me out of here go to the next farm and it goes back to this farm and waits until it fills up once again. So it's a really really useful system for collecting farms automatically or like I said uh, transferring items from one area to another. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you exactly how to build this uh, right now. Okay so let's go ahead and build this. Uh, the first thing we'll build is the unloading station. So we'll come down here and place a double chest right there with a hopper right on top and then on top of that hopper we'll place our powered rail and then a regular rail right beside it. Next up come in front of the chest place a block down and we want a comparator facing out of the hopper that'll go into a block with a torch on it just like that. Block on top of the torch and then a repeater uh, facing toward the powered rail and then a block right in front of that repeater. And so now we'll go ahead and extend this track out here just a few blocks we'll place a powered rail down and so now if we get out a minecart, and so I'll just demonstrate here, if we put some stuff in it and then push it toward the powered rail, you'll see it'll stop on there. You see this torch turns off whenever this cart is unloading items into the hopper, and then it should turn on and relaunch whenever it's done unloading. So let's just simulate that. There we go. So that's up and working. Next up, we're just going to draw out this line a little bit here, and we'll place levers underneath wherever we have powered rails. So I'm just going to come out about 20 blocks or so. This would obviously go to wherever your uh, secondary location is, be it your farm or uh, maybe another base you have somewhere. So I'm just going to bring it out quite a ways here. And then we'll just go ahead and place down some tracks and some powered rails periodically. And some more powered rail, some more tracks, some more powered rail, and some more tracks. And then we're just going to go through and we're going to power all these powered rails just like so. You can also use redstone blocks here, of course, if you really wanted to. There we are. Okay, so let's go ahead and build the single station minecart loader here. So we're going to go ahead and place a detector rail down like that, then a powered rail like so. And then we'll come up one, place a powered rail down like that, destroy it, and place a block. Then get a fence and place it 
right on top of the detector rail like so. Then we'll place a hopper on top of the uh, powered rail there. And then just keep going up here. This can be uh, leading directly to your farm or whatever. This is just basically where the items come down to get loaded into the cart here. And so then I uh, will come out two blocks here uh, with a comparator. This first comparator here should be on subtraction mode and just a normal comparator there. And come up one block and we're going to need a torch right there. And we'll also need a piston, sticky piston facing inward like so. Okay, so now this next part here, let me get out, get out of block here, this next part will depend on what type of farm you have. Um, I'll sh sort of explain why it depends on that, but let's go ahead and come out three blocks here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and build a melon and pumpkin farm collector. Uh, so we'll come out three blocks, four blocks right there. Turn on the lever here, and we'll come over one, two, three blocks. Okay. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain the signal strength of 13 here going into the side of this comparator. Um, so what that means is whenever this detector rail outputs a signal strength of 14, then this comparator will output a signal, as will this comparator. This will turn off, and the piston will retract, allowing the cart to go back and unload. Now, that's necessary if you have a two-item farm, which I plan for this to be. I plan for this to be a melon and pumpkin farm. Uh, the same would be true if you wanted it to be a, uh, say like a uh, brown and red mushroom farm. However, if you wanted it to be a single item farm, for instance like a sugar cane farm or a cacti farm, you'd want a situation like this where you have a signal strength of 14 here going into the side. Uh, let me just show you why that is. So if we come over here, you'll see here we have a, a minecart chest here and you have a signal strength of 13 here when you have this amount of items in there so we'll go ahead and put some items in there it's still power 13 here but if we put one more item in here it becomes power 14 and you'll notice here that this is so this is 14 signal strength uh, the minimum amount of items for 14 signal strength and you'll see that it always has one slot open here so um, yeah at this point here the cart will, uh, in this instance, go ahead and be launched back. And you'll see it always has at least one slot open. Now that's critical because in rare instances you can get a situation where you have something like this occur occurring. So here you see we have uh, all pumpkins in here. And basically that means only pumpkins will be loaded next into this cart. And so... Uh, if you had, a, say for instance, a situation like like that, where you have a signal strength of 14, if you, so if you have a situation like this, the p potential exists if you were to have a situation like this on a, a two-item farm, that the cart could simply get stuck here, where you have pumpkins in that hopper, and... Yeah, you can't load any more pumpkins in here. So if this cart was stuck, uh, or if this cart was basically on this, uh, basically right here loading, it would get stuck here because it couldn't load any pumpkins and the signal strength wouldn't change. So that's why on a two, uh, yeah, two item farm you need this to be 13 in signal strength right there. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how to add a farm or another station onto this. So we'll go ahead and come out right here gonna add a sugarcane farm so one item farm onto this on the north side here so let's go ahead and do something like that and we'll come over like this we'll add some powered rails like that come on over here put a detector rail let's put a detector rail right there and then we'll go ahead and place powered rail down there block there powered rail down there destroy that place a block up like that then we'll need a fence right here and now <clears throat> we want to detect exactly what conditions we want this thing to fire under uh, but first we'll go ahead and place down our hoppers here so this will lead up to our farm or where we put items into this okay so from this point here 
uh, everything is going to be a little bit different than this farm here. This will be the farm where our cart sits while it's idle. Um, and this other farm over here, and any other farms we add before here, will be the farms where um, it goes in, it collects the stuff, and whenever either uh, this uh, hopper here is empty, or it fills up past a certain level, or uh, the cart itself uh, is empty when it comes in here and doesn't collect any items out of this hopper, uh, it will be launched off to the next farm. So in this case, it's just this this farm here, since we only have two farms. But uh, that does mean we have a little bit of a different uh, redstone pattern here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, put two comparators down there and there. Uh, do not put either one of these into subtraction mode. Put a block down like this, and we'll have a torch on this like so. Now we're going to come down here like this. And we're going to have some redstone here, block, and then a comparator on subtraction mode right here. Now this is going to go into a block here with a torch on it. And then we'll have a sticky piston on the side here and right there as well. Now we'll place down a block here and a block right next to the powered rail like that and we want a comparator coming out of the hopper this bottommost hopper like that okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here next to this comparator here and we want a signal strength of 12 going into the side of this comparator here so uh, let me show you exactly why that is so if we come over on, on this side here uh, if I go ahead and take one off of this you'll see this has a signal strength here of 12 and if we put in one more so that's 10 there you'll see that that becomes a signal strength of 13 so if you imagine all this is sugarcane here um, basically whenever we get all the sugarcane in here that we can get up to this point and launch and it'll have three slots left when it gets to that other farm which is good because then it can change from 13 to 14 as we specified before. So you'll see this has a signal strength of 13 here. So it needs to be at least 14 before it fires here. Otherwise, if we made this any bigger, uh, the possibility exists that, like I said before, the cart could get stuck on this, uh, this track here. Um, so that's why we need it to be 12. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, five I think that's it yep turn that on and we'll need some redstone here there we are make sure that's signal strength 12 it is fantastic okay so basically what this will do is it will first of all output a signal whenever a cart comes uh, by here uh, so if I put this down here give it a little nudge in there you'll see it turns this torch off so this this will actually try to retract this piston, but this um, yeah, this comparator is still on because there are still items in this hopper. And once items are all empty and cleared out of that hopper, there's nothing left to collect, so it'll launch this cart back here. So we should see it here any second. Yep, there we go. And yeah, right now it is actually going back to unload, but we can make it here so that... Uh, yeah, it basically will turn to the to the left here to the other farm. Okay, so whenever this thing launches from this uh, farm, we want it to go over here to try and collect items from here before launching back this way and, yeah, basically going back and unloading. So what we'll do is we'll come down here beneath the junction between the two, and we may need a torch here. Just see what happens. Okay, so that's the default. We want it to be like that. Alright, um, so uh, what we need then is we need a yeah, torch underneath here and basically we'll have this uh, like this coming this way and then we want it to switch when it comes back down this way so it turns left. So we'll need a detector rail, so let me grab one of those, there we are. So we'll put a detector rail say here or so come down beneath here like this and then we'll have 
two more blocks like this put it on three ticks let's say and then just do that so now when it comes down here we should see it turn that way yep and then it should do whatever there get some stuff and then go back straight here to unload okay that's exactly what we want only only problem is here this right here you'll see it right here since it's not full yep so there's no items in this hopper there's no items in this cart so we still want it to launch here because there's nothing to collect we want it to go and see if there's stuff to collect over here which there just happens to be so how do we fix that well we'll have to come directly underneath of our detector rail here and so this will be the empty cart detection we'll place a uh, yeah piece of redstone there I'm just gonna get rid of the cart for right now and then we're gonna come on over here like this uh, we'll come up right here so we want this to be like this this over here and we'll come up again right here actually we'll come up one over here first like that and then we're gonna come around here like this and then back to this point here and we're also gonna add some delay to this so we'll add some delay like that like that and then redstone all along like that okay so what should happen now is if we send in an empty cart uh, it should wait here for a brief second uh, this uh, the delay line here will then trigger and yeah it should uh, allow the cart to uh, be launched and then it should go over here to the melon pumpkin farm so let's make sure this works so we'll come over here there we go and then it launches back very nice okay and the final thing you might want to add to this system is just a way to turn off the entire thing so let me just go ahead and show you how to do that so just have a redstone repeater going into this block right here and you want to come up to three blocks and you'll place a redstone block down right there come up another block here and place a sticky piston facing downward like that and now if you place a uh, lever here you'll see here it turns off this um, yeah this rail here so whenever the cart returns it'll unload and then just simply uh, sit here until you turn it on again at which point it'll launch and start collecting the farms okay so that's basically the entire system done here you can add on more uh, farms if you'd like and uh, just a quick note here you can add on uh, some logic to for instance this intersection here uh, so you can pull out a signal here and basically compare a signal uh, to say that if it's over uh, if the cart is full enough go ahead and send it back immediately instead of going to this uh, farm first that does save a little bit of time uh, but if you have a lot of farms it can it can uh, make a big difference uh, I'll just show you over here I have a five farm design right here so this is a five farm design here this is the uh, unloader here uh, this is the melon farm this is a sugarcane farm here and then I have mushroom farm chicken farm and uh, cacti farm right there so you can have a bunch of different farms connected to this if you'd like and I think that's gonna be it for me today if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best that I can but thank you all very much for watching this has been Cub Fan. goodbye <laughs>